Dear friends, dear subscribers, when I create a new video, I try to keep your interests in mind. What topic interests you? And over the past few weeks, questions about premenstrual syndrome have become more frequent among the subscribers on my Instagram page. If at the moment you are interested in this topic, watch this video. I'm Dr. Lana Verezoska and I welcome you at my YouTube channel. So what is premenstrual syndrome? Many of you are asking this question because you think the syndrome is a disease. What is the danger of the syndrome? Why does it occur? Is this a sign of hormonal imbalance? And when you search the, for this information, you usually find very few answers to your question. The definition of premenstrual syndrome speaks for itself. There are symptoms that occur before menstruation or periods. But let's talk more about PMS. I want to reassure you that PMS is not a manifestation of hormonal imbalance. On the contrary, it occurs in women of reproductive age who have regular menstrual cycles, regular ovulation. Women who take hormonal contraception do not have these symptoms. By the way, the hormones are described in detail in the book, It's All Hormones. PMS is is experienced by 80-95% of women, if not more. There are more than 100 symptoms of this syndrome, which indeed is not a diagnosis, not a disease. But this does not mean that all these 100 symptoms will be in one woman. PMS usually manifests itself at the level of one organ system. But premenstrual disorders is a disease. They occur in 3 to 12 percent of women. Premenstrual disorders consist of psychiatric and somatic symptoms and develop within the luteal phase of the menstrual cycle, affect the patient's normal daily functioning, and resolve shortly after menstruation. Let me remind you that women who do not take hormonal contraception have two phases of the cycle. In the first phase, or estrogen, the X matures. This maturation ends with ovulation. And then the second phase of the menstrual cycle begins, progesterone or luteal. The luteal phase begins after ovulation and ends with the start of menstruation. All the symptoms that a woman experiences with PMS can be divided into two main groups. The first group is mental symptoms or affect attacks of anger, anxiety, irritability, depression, confusion, crying, tearfulness, social withdrawal. The second group of symptoms we call somatic, as they occur in different parts of the body. Bloating and constipation, headache and migraine, breast tension and pain, swelling of the body and legs, weight gain, craving for food, and others. I'm sure that many of you have experienced of, or continue to experience at least one of the symptoms. However, if it doesn't cause you discomfort or interfere with your daily routine, then your PMS is not a disease. All symptoms often resolve by the end of menstruation. Why do these symptoms occur? Because due to changes in hormonal level, a decrease in estrogen and then progesterone, intestinal motility can deteriorate, water is retained in the tissue, blood sugar levels drop, so women want to eat more, especially sweets. The destruction of cells, the destruction of cells that have grown in the mammary glands begins under the influence of high level of progesterone before. Therefore, in women who do not ov ovulate, PMS practically does not occur. And just the use of hormonal contraception and the suppression of ovulation can be one of the methods of treatment of PMS. Women also ask me why PMS gets worse with age. And for example, by the age of 40s, many women experience high blood pressure and migraines. It is not exactly premenstrual syndrome because as you get older, there are more cycles without ovulation. Due to the aging process, the risk of developing hypertension increases. So women may have experienced increased 
pressure before menstruation more. Also, some women experience premenstrual migraines. There is also menstrual migraine. The occurrence of such a migraine may be due to a low level of hormones, especially progesterone. Surprisingly, for such common condition, there have been very few studies comparing different interventions. And what can help? First of all, the explanation to a woman that PMS is a normal physiological phenomenon in the life of most women. It turned out that when women understand their nature better, they tolerate PMS more easily. There is a little good quality evidence for any of the wide range of treatments available for PMS. And the selection of treatment is mainly governed by a personal choice. Premenstrual or dysphoric disorder usually needs intervention of psychiatry. Secondly, there are no special diets to reduce PMS. So a woman should not deny herself her favorite food. But drinking more water and fiber helps reduce uh, bowel syndrome. Fitness classes, swimming, meditation, relaxation also help reduce PMS and stress worsens symptoms. Some women use herbal preparation, different teas. It turns out that they usually have a placebo effect. In fact, many substances and methods have been tried to eliminate PMS. Vitamins, minerals, other biological supplements, acupuncture, etc. If a placebo helps someone and it does not harm the body, then a placebo can be used. Symptoms associated with mental and emotional problems can be suppressed by antidepressants. Hormonal contraceptives turn off X maturation and ovulation, and this too can be a treatment for PMS. Thus, let's sum up. Premenstrual syndrome is not a disease. It occurs in almost all women who have physiological menstrual cycles and therefore does not require treatment. In a small number of women, the syndrome may manifest as a dysphoric disorder, meaning the symptoms may be severe. In such cases, treatment is required. Treatment is usually provided by a gynecologist or psychiatrist. If you like this video, please click like and subscribe to my video channel. Do not forget to suggest topics for future videos in the comments. All the best!